Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to the channel. And we're going to dive right into episode 22 of the JBJ 65 gallon reef build. Now, before we get too far, I want to remind anyone that's new, if you stumbled across this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, notification bell. Make sure you stay up to date on all my latest content, you know, random live streams. And more importantly, don't miss a video in this now, you know, action packed journey of the JBJ 65 gallon reef build. Now I say action packed because this video, we're gonna talk a lot more about things we haven't yet. And that's adding SPS corals, test kits, acclimation, and just everything related to that kind of content is finally here guys. So before we get too far, I wanna also recap and kind of put a finale on the last video. When I featured the Q-Maven lights and comparing the PAR readings and measurements to the Radeon Gen 4 XR15s on the tank, kind of left you guys open-ended with that video, meaning wasn't sure what I was going to do or kind of ask your guys' opinion as far as switching the lights maybe or what you thought of them. Well, at the end of the day, awesome lights, but they ended up just not meeting the needs for me, so I decided to stay with the Radeon. So I figured I'll go ahead, kind of put a finale on that video and recap it for you all. But now it's time to move forward. Let's get to what's coming in this video. Hit the like button now because you're definitely going to enjoy it. And here we go, guys. And for those with a quick pause button or a quick eye, you probably caught the contents of the box. But if not, don't worry. I'm going to go into full detail later in the video, give you guys some great looks at my first high end SPS coral haul for the JBJ. Now, these were shipped in through Aqua SD from California. I got to tell you, it's probably some of the best packaging that I've ever seen on corals. They're still warm, you know, they're wrapped right on time. And once again, had it shipped to a commercial residence instead of going to your house, the UPS guy always treats them with a little more respect. So for those that were wondering, you know, CJ, how do you add corals to your tank? How do you, you know, acclimate stuff? What is your process? Well, I've never really discussed it in this series. I did on my previous JBJ, but it's time to finally share what I actually do when it comes to new livestock on my tank. So this includes coral and fish. One thing I never skip is the temperature acclimation. Now, it was pretty entertaining because these bags actually did not have any air in them. I didn't know it at the time until I put them in and they sunk right to the bottom of the tank. So I thought that was pretty funny. I'll share that clip with you all. But one thing I do want to make sure I mention is the writing on the bag. Honestly, looking at it in the tank kind of made me wonder if it may be better to use an external source that's set to the same temperature as your tank. So that way you kind of remove that extra layer of contamination that may have happened from fingers on the bags, you know, ink on the bags, whatever the case may be, just kind of food for thought that I may use in the future. But when it comes to the water that comes with the bags, I don't use all of it. I try to have a 50 50 mix so that way I can slowly, well, not really slowly, but at least somewhat acclimate these corals to the actual tanks parameters. So in order to do that, you know, pop the bags open, discard half of it, and then later I'll add in some tank water. But I want to give you guys a good look at the packaging. Like I said, completely tight, sealed, no leaks. And they even wrap the corals in an extra, I don't know if that's a thick piece of plastic or film or something like that, which further protected the corals. Not one frag had any breaks on it. No branches broke, no damage at all to the frag. So I got to tell you, it's a pretty amazing job of packing these corals. So Aqua SD, salute to you. I'm not sure if anyone else is watching this that may be wanting to ship corals, but hopefully you can take something away from this video and maybe use it on your first attempt or second attempt or improve whatever your process is. So some of you guys might be wondering, you know, CJ, you acclimated it. You just drop it right in the tank. And the answer is no. I actually do one additional step using the revived coral dip. This is purely for pest prevention. Nothing is 100 percent. You know, a quarantine system was probably the best way, just like quarantining your fish, quarantining your corals is the best way to prevent things from getting in your tank. But if you're not going to do both, at least a quick dip or inspection will usually catch a majority of the stuff they can get in. Now, I know the revived coral cleaner doesn't kill all pests, but from my experience using this, I've been pretty good at keeping things out of my tank and knock on wood. I've, I don't think I've had Aptasia in any of my systems for the last I don't know how long, probably since my very first reef tank. So done a great job of inspecting and preventing pests from getting in the system doing this way. So if you're curious about it, hey, give it a try. I like revived depth. There are different kinds you can use with a quick brush, quick inspection. And these guys are pretty much ready to go. Now, if you guys didn't notice the gloves, there's something really particular about 
keeping my hands out of the tank as much as possible keeping my hands off of corals as much as possible is something i've always believed in i just think it's something bad about humans period being in the reef environment you know our skin our oils on our skin soaps lotions whatever the case may be i just don't think it's good for your tank so adding these corals to the rack above the water allows me to you know keep things out of the tank and allows me to put these guys in the water hands free if you don't believe me put your arm in your tank and see if your corals respond even if you're not touching them even if your hand just barely touches the water it's just something about us that makes things respond in a negative way so I'm trying to minimize that and the only time I'm going to put my hands in here is when I mount these guys and then after that once again hands out of the tank so tank maintenance days if something falls in there I use something else to kind of grab it out the number one goal is just keep your hands out of your tank and usually good things will happen as a result so let me give you guys a quick first look at some of these corals in the tank holy <laughs> I don't even want to say what I want to say but keep in mind these guys are fresh out of the box fresh out of acclimation and fresh out of a coral dip and this is the first footage I get of them absolutely crazy the colors on these corals so man I gotta tell you I think things are looking bright for the JBJ as long as I do what I'm supposed to do I'm sure these corals will do what they're supposed to do and then I mean the possibilities are endless so we're gonna go into more details about the names of each one and how they look but for now the last step as far as adding corals for me is the acclimation for my lighting you know you already acclimated them for temperature for tank parameters you know you check for pests the absolute last thing you can do to kill your corals right away is give them too much light or bleach them or burn them to death you know trying to mimic what you think is the environment they came from which may have been a three or four hundred par environment does not necessarily mean it's going to be that in your tank so for me back to all blues guys as once again you know i run blues a lot on my system so the goal is is to keep these guys in a minimal kind of par environment blues only until they get acclimated until they get used to my tanks parameters hopefully keeping their colors in the process and then keeping them healthy in the process so that's pretty much it that is going to be my steps of acclimating corals we'll get a closer look at these guys a little later so let's switch gears for a moment and answer a question a lot of you guys may have had you know what does cj use to test this tank and to be honest i wasn't testing my tank a lot the first few months but now that i'm starting to get into some higher end corals i have to stay on top of my game Hannah checkers and Salifer test kits are going to be my tools of choice now i've been doing this for years at this point i'm pretty familiar with how to use these checkers and i've kind of come up with my own routine way of doing it and it may not be the way you do it it may not be the way the instructions have it per se but it gives me repeatable results and allows me to track trends in my tank i'm not looking for an exact number i mean you're never going to get an exact scientific number when you run these tests the main goal is to track trends so one word of advice i can give you on the alkalinity checker is just making sure that you use the same bottle i don't use both bottles i found that it's hard to get an exact amount of water in both test tubes so just use one and after you hit c1 you know use that same bottle add your reagent put it back in there and i found that allows me to duplicate my retest results a little easier so if i checked it again and again and again i can usually get within you know 0.1 dkh and it's very very accurate doing it that way so that would be my number one word of advice when it comes to using the alkalinity checker from hannah just making sure you do that and of course if you have the older one like me you gotta do the conversion so that ended up converting to around 10 dkh which was way higher than i wanted it to be but we'll talk more about that a little later in the video now the next test kit is going to be the ultra low phosphorus hannah checker this is probably going to be one of the best purchases i ever made because tracking phosphates in the lower range is pretty much impossible with those handheld test kits we have to match colors or trying to see a you know change color you know reagent or whatever the case may be it's pretty much impossible to discern that by the naked eye and i found this test to be very very accurate now through the same process i use the same exact test valve i fill it up with tank water hit c1 pull that same bottle out add the reagent to it one thing i found is after shaking it if you do a slow roll of the tube and slowly move the air bubble back and forth it allows you to trap all the little mist that may be in the tank and help remove that from the bottle as well so just one little tip i do as far as trying to get accurate results and once again you know it spits out a repeatable result 
and I can pretty much get this on the money every single time. Doesn't take long at all once you get a routine. This ends up converting to around 0.15 phosphates, which is right where I had it before. So when it comes to the salad fruit kits, the first one I'm showing you is gonna be the nitrate test kit. Very, very easy to do. You know, after you add your, your sample of take water, put a few drops of the reagent in, a scoop of the reagent in, mix it up, and pretty much just let it set for a few minutes and match the color. Very, very straightforward. You know, there's a few more steps involved, but overall the process is very, very quick. As long as you're used to it and have your routine down. Now, I don't like the idea of having to match it by color, but best guess, I would say I'm anywhere between 25 parts per million and 10, and that's the best as you can do. <laughs> so, I mean, the main thing is making sure I have nutrients in the tank to make sure I don't bottom out or, you know, have any issues as far as dinos or any of those things before. But uh, the second kit is going to be the magnesium kit. That's the exact same. You know, it involves adding a reagent and then a powder and a liquid mixing it together and then there is a color change reagent that you fill in the tube and you pretty much just kind of shake and stir shake and stir shake and stir until it changes colors now for me i was a little shocked to see it go all the way to the bottom of the tube before it changed colors which means that my magnesium is extremely high in the jbj and by high around the 1470 to 1500 range so pretty much at the top of the chart but we'll talk a little more about that later in the video now the last test kit I want to cover is going to be the HANA checker for calcium. Now I got to admit this is one that I'm still kind of getting better with but what I found helped is filling one of the tubes with RODI water actually makes it a lot easier. Just top it off with RODI water and use that as your sample water for the rest of the test. So it's going to involve you you know, putting some reagent in the, in the valve and then filling that valve up to the line with RODI water. And then after that, using a few, you know, different things as far as some of the powder and then using the dropper and then filling it up. So at the end of the day, I just found filling up one of the valves with RODI water was the key for me, getting it done a lot faster and a lot easier, a lot quicker. Unfortunately, the result was a little skewed in this case because I made a mistake making the video. I filled it up with tank water instead of roadie water. So, hey scratch the result the process is still the same a little quicker this time but definitely something i gotta get some more practice at so at this point you guys are wondering cj what the hell was the final result you know what is your tank running at right now and before i tell you the numbers let me tell you this it really doesn't matter if you're watching this thinking hey i'm gonna mimic this or i have to mimic his parameters to look like his tank or mimic anyone's parameters to look like their tank let me just remind you guys really quick i'm not doing that I'm not trying to make my parameters match anyone's that I'm watching at all. It's something that I've learned a long time ago in the hobby. Chasing numbers is not something you want to do. You just want to chase how your tank looks. If it looks good, just keep your numbers at that. So with that being said, for me, my alkalinity was at around 10 dKH. Calcium, uh, after testing it correctly, was around 440. My magnesium was close to 1500. Phosphates, point. 1.5 and nitrates around 20 parts per million is the numbers I have currently in the JBJ now this is going to be after doing a water change roughly you know three or four days before receiving this coral pack and then I did another water change a week before that so there has been two 20 gallon water changes in the tank over the last three weeks that I want to make sure I make sure I mention for you all but other than that this is pretty much where we're at and as you guys can tell corals look fantastic the only thing I didn't like was the fact that my alkalinity had rose into around 10, which it was setting at around 9 dKH for the last two weeks or so. So usually if that happens, you know, that means that something disrupted the tank being comfortable. You know, if your tank stops consuming, then you did something. So I'm going to attribute that to probably the water changes, especially the size of the water changes threw off some stability in the tank. But other than that, we're going to roll with it, you know, disable the calcium reactor, let the tank stay where it is until it starts consuming and then i'll turn that calcium reactor back on and you know we'll keep the party moving so as i said before am i concerned with what the numbers are right now no i'm not i don't want them to keep increasing crazy but i'm not going to do anything crazy to try to reduce them especially when the corals and the tank are looking as happy as they are right now so hopefully you know that gives you guys some food for thought on maybe how you can approach your tank not the parameters but just paying attention to how your tank looks 
more than how you want the numbers to be so let me give you guys a better look at what came in that frag pack because i know a lot of you guys were wondering cj what was in the box what was in the box here we go guys tons and tons of fire and when i say fire these are going to be cores i've never had before in the hobby these are going to be my first attempt at stepping into the high end of sps and the reef tanks so for me i'm never really big a big name brand guy when it comes to corals i only care about the colors if it looks good i can find a place for it put it in my master plan and everything works out but for those who are looking at this that did not know or were wondering what they were i've included the names so if you want to look these corals up or see how they may look as far as colonies and pictures and those kind of things be my guest but for me i'm very excited about the potential of all these colors and just growing them out this is my first time really putting some effort into growing sps in the 120 gallon i started to have sps corals encrusting and i was happy about it i was like man i got corals encrusting i almost got it figured out and that tank had to end prematurely not this time this jdj is going to be a system that i'm going to see it all the way through i'm going to try to see if i can make little things grow in the mini colony so that's pretty much the goal and i tell you some of these colors jesus man that pc rainbow is something i've never seen before definitely some very very high-end corals and for those wondering where they came from here you go if you don't recognize this tank you probably haven't been on youtube that long and you need to go and subscribe to west coast reefer he's probably going to kill me for doing this but you know frag packs came from him he actually is working on a brand new build and i was able to secure some of his babies from his tank for the jbj so if you guys are interested and actually want to purchase a frag pack from him or get some of his high-end stuff which he has plenty of it go follow him on instagram at the real west coast reefer i will put his information down below in the description highlight them for your frag pack to get some of that candy so what is the ultimate goal or you know end game for the jbj if i want to say that the master plan right very simple guys and everything is going according to my plan in my mind you know knowing when i first started this time had football season coming i was gonna not gonna be able to really pay attention to it so i was mainly hands off and just letting it get you know nasty and do what it do which led to some other issues which I had to overcome, which was the dinos. And then that was followed by the cyanobacteria. And then that was followed by the algae issues. I've been able to overcome all of those things in the JBJ. Still a little algae, but nowhere near what it was. So once I got past those things, the next focus was getting my entire stock list in the tank. Meaning I didn't want to add fish over time, you know, one here, one there, and continual playing Russian roulette with adding a unquarantined fish hoping i didn't have anything wrong with it and kill the tank i figured i would do it all in one shot which is what i did added five fish from live aquaria and finalized my stock list meaning these 11 fish is going to be the fish i plan on rolling with for the life of the jbj unless i have an unexpected death or something i'm not going to be adding any more fish to the tank so once you get all of that wrapped in the bundle you got your livestock sorted you got it past major issues as far as dinos and everything else the only thing left for me to do is to pack the corals in the tank meaning at all the sps i'm going to add first which is what i'm doing i'm going to fill up that ridge we're going to get these things mounted and i'll do that in a later video and explain my process in mounting whether it's the techniques the products i use the color schemes we're going to cover that in a future video but ultimately guys the goal is to get this thing packed with corals within the next month or so and then the rest of 2020 let this tank grow out so year two of the jbj is going to be focused on growth and growth alone and then by the end of the year hopefully we're fragging and we're able to share some of these corals with local hobbyists and keep the hobby moving forward so for me i think that's pretty much the end game that is the ultimate goal of the jbj now it's not going to be easy i still have my biggest hurdles in front of me especially venturing into the waters of the unknown you know with these high-end sps corals got some tenuous corals i got some melipora i got some stylopora in here you know i got some easier to keep corals digitatas you know i got some satosas i got some different things in the jbj i'm not done you know i have plans on adding clams and i have plans on adding a few other things so it's one of those situations to where i'm going to try to stay fluent with it not really push the envelope too much but also relying on knowing 
that I have everything the tank needs already. So don't have to worry about things consuming too much in the tank. I got a calcium reactor that's rated for way bigger than what this tank is. So if I ever got to a situation where the tank was drinking, test my tank, make a couple of adjustments, and boom, we're good to go. So at this point, it's just trying to get things added to the tank, get things mounted where I want them, get them growing, get the tank to where it's pretty much on autopilot, roll in the football season, come out of the season with many colonies, and hopefully, you know, great progress in the JBJ. So at this point, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this update. I told you guys it was going to be a long one. I didn't really want to drag it out too long, but it was just a lot to share. You know, we finally have some great corals in the tank. So hopefully you guys, you know, if you have comments or questions, anything I missed or was unclear on, feel free to drop a comment down below. Remember, you guys are just passengers in the journey of the JBJ. So on that note, if you haven't subscribed or hit that like button at this point, go ahead and hit that. And as always, hey, you guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing. I'll catch you guys next time.